check on the phones. Okay, we already got to get started already, so I guess we're... Sure. Welcome to Sea Time, everybody. Over there. Yeah. Yeah. Show this week we will like results, <laughs> news, and online shenanigans so that make weird. being online a good time. Oh, We'd like to say thank you to Fly Racing for their support of Sea Time. Please go check them out at flyracing.com. Hmm. Welcome to Sea Time, everybody. We are live. That is Jordan Bailey. Oh my gosh, look at you. For those of you guys who do not know, this is Sea Time that you're watching. This is pretty much the best time on the internet, or internet that you're going to have on a Tuesday evening that's semi, you know, we might we might say bad words every now and again, but we're going to keep our clothes on. We're going to keep it as, uh, as, 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 I guess, PG-13 as we can these days. I don't know. Movies, movie, movie ratings have seemed to have gone in a weird, a weird way, so... Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll try to keep it PG, PG-13. So, seat time. Uh, for those of you who do not know, we talk about off-road news. We talk about dirt bike racing. We talk about a little bit of beer drinking, some bench racing, and all kinds of fun stuff that goes on in the off-road world. Um, why do we have such a fantastically better-looking person to my right than I am this evening? It's just because of the fact that we like having as many fun people on the show as we can um, in studio because it makes it more interesting. We've already had a fantastic evening just the past 20 minutes. We've been sitting down next to each other. My stench isn't as bad as most people would have thought. Um, she's putting up with it, so I think uh, most, most other people can as well. So it's not that bad. We do have some of the feedback that you might be hearing in the background of some of our fine guests that we have. So obviously, uh, Jordan Bailey. Jordan Milbauer, as a lot of you used to know her. Well, she's Jordan Bailey now, so get over it. Um, so how far away do you happen to live from me? In Texas, um, it was like thirty minutes, forty-five minutes. That's not bad. No, no. With bad traffic? With ba yeah, there was some bad traffic. Those bad travel uh, traffic sucks. Yeah, Stevens always got to deal with that. Unfortunately, that's yeah, why we pay him the big. There was bucks. actually like some fruit and vegetables on the road, and people all like stopped up, huddled up around it. Like that they were the stealing it? Or? No, they were just wanted to see it. Huh, that was the traffic. I mean, typically well, all the Texas. fruits that people stare at are in like Dallas. You know, all right. <laughs> oh, just gotta say it. Just gotta throw it out there. It's always a fun time. So we also have some uh, fantastic guests this evening. Uh, we we decided since uh, you know Geico decided to steal all of our fresh fun ideas about Google Hangouts, we bring it back, and uh, we can tell it's going just as good for us as it did for them. And uh, we've got Brian Elliott from Idaho, Eric Kudla over in the West Coast. I want to say California, and then of course uh, Jared Bolton. Uh, covering the East Coast for us. Yeah, he is. Hi, America. <laughs> so, I'm going to start with Brian Elliott because I want to start with Brian Elliott. You're more Northwest. How is your evening going, kind sir? Oh, man, my evening's going great. You, you've been doing a lot of moving, eh? Yeah, man. We uh, just got back from West Virginia last night and... Now we're getting ready to move to Montana. <laughs> mm. Montana. How far away are you moving from where you live now? Oh, it's, I think it's about seven or eight hours. Eleven? Uh, seven or eight. Seven or eight. I don't do I don't do math. Um, so it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. So have you ever been to Montana? Never. Never been to Montana. Uh, have you been riding recently though? Have I rode recently? Yeah. No, not really. You thought about it though. Yeah. You know what that means. What? You need to come to the Off-Road Amateur National Championship that's going to be in Montana Absolutely. later this year in August. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Brian's going to be there, and uh, I'm going to be there, and we are going to be trying to create as much awesome as possible. Well, of course I have to be there then. this event. Yeah, I know. I really think that you're you're going to be like our Aaron Bates. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no bolt-on accessories that come with this job or anything, but I'm just saying. Yeah, because I, I don't know if I got it, but all right. What do you think, Brian? you think she could fill in? Yeah, you know, I mean, we can have a good time. I think they have a good time. For sure. Are you in a Star Wars movie? <laughs> Star Wars? <laughs> I have to say, it's like, these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. Okay, you hear me now. You're like, just put it in your throat. All right. Uh, I want to talk to the next gentleman, Eric Kudla. What are you doing in California? Uh, being sick. Awesome. 
who's been in bed all day, getting ready to head out to Reno for the Reno Extreme, which is uh, going to be an AMA National Hare and Hound and a uh, SCORE HDRA World Championship of Desert Racing, and it's going to be a crazy good time. I want to know more about this. This was... We were talking about this last week, and that was obviously that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show. We love the fact that you're like kind of like our West Coast correspondent. You can kind of talk to us really well about uh, a lot of the racing that goes on there, a lot of the riders that are out there, how cool Nick Burson is in real life, opposed to just on the internet. Uh, okay. it, it things like yeah, it's like, guys. But uh, yeah, so to give us give us some more about what's going on with the Reno Extreme and all the racing out there. Um. Well, the Reno Extreme, uh, so last year I got asked by Roger Norman um, to host this event in conjunction with his truck race, and we put it together in two weeks last year, and we had a handful of guys that came out and did it, and Jake Augurek won it, and uh, Travis Coy uh, got second, and Jordan Brandt got third, a bunch of the ice to e guys, so it was a lot of fun. It was really tough. It's like all lava rock and, and gnarly, but the coolest thing is that at the same time, there's a truck race going on, and you actually go underneath the truck course as, like, they're riding over you. And it's it's really crazy, and uh, there's, like, a monster cabana, and it was, it was um, live fed on Dirt Live. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, up close. Man. But anyways, <laughs> um, so this year, uh, we got asked to make it an AMA National Hair and Hound, um, and it's also part of the SCORE HDRI World Championship. So it's even bigger and it's even better, and uh, it's now it's 75 miles instead of 36. So it's it's going to be gnarly. So more money, um, you know, yeah. more miles, more Monster Girls. I mean, Hopefully. boom, right? That's yeah. if I was yeah. in California, I know where I'd be this coming. Uh, well, no, Reno, yeah, woo, Nevada. It's gonna be good. I'm like a geologist yeah. over here figuring out my geolocations. Can you geocache yeah. there? That's a thing, isn't it? People geocache. Probably, right? Yeah, I, I would imagine. So there's geocaches everywhere. But I just found out what that was, too. So, uh, well, but, I, have, uh, I have a daughter, so I've been geocaching. What is it. geocaching? Yeah. You so, get like a little thing and you go GPS. Like a, people like hide stuff. Or, like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, but they, now it's like a worldwide oh. thing. Thing. Sounds Google cool. it. Whatever you do, don't Google blue waffles. Google ge geocaching. So, tell me more about the Monster Girls, Eric. I don't know. They'll be there. There's there's one for everybody. So, you know, you're like, ah, that one's okay, that one's okay, but I like that one. And my other buddy's like, oh, that one's good. I like that one. So, you can kind of pick your own when you're there. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but there's like Monster Cabana where, um, you know, I think it's VIP, but then at a certain time of night, they let everybody in, and it's free drinks. Um, so it's good times. And last year, um, Ivan Stewart was the guest host for the live feed. So, and he was interviewing the writers after they finished and everything. And and uh, so he might be there again this year, or somebody else just like that. So it'll be good. Man, good cool. Time. Well, obviously, we're gonna definitely uh, with all the hair and hound stuff that's about to, I guess, start back up from kind of a big break, and then take another big break, and then kind of keep moving on. Uh, yeah. We've got lots of racing going on. So what else are you kind of doing on the West Coast besides that race? Um, well, I've been running the Youth National Hare and Hound Series, which has been taking off. It's uh, The first round, we only had 30 riders. The second round, we had 55. When we went to Utah, we had over 80. So it's it's taken off. We have little kids, like, starting as young as four years old. The kid that's leading the peewee class is five years old, just turned five. What? And so we've got... And in the Super Minis, they've got kids coming from Idaho, from Utah, and everywhere to race down here. Um, we got that going on. Um, the Western Enduro Championship, I'm, I'm, an, I'm not in charge of it anymore. But I got kind of booted out of that. But, uh, I'm still running the back end of it. I do all that stuff. I go to all the races. And they then, they uh, kicked you out because of the fact that you charged too much money. <laughs> no, no. They no, they kicked me out because I started my, uh, my own racing suit. Yep. Are you guys saying that the Reno Extreme costs too much? Is that what you're saying? No, no, there's no. It's just because they they wanted me to charge six hundred bucks, and I was like, "Are you crazy?" So, yeah, <laughs> plus there's a pro crazy. payback, which there's there's you don't get that very many other places, especially out here. In yeah. yeah. All right. Now, all talking right. about other kinds of paybacks and all kinds of stuff that seem to have been getting kinds of crazy was the fact that Jared Bolton still has red hair. Now, 
I, oh, so nice. I kind of. Oh yeah. <laughs> there it is. It looks good. But so I, I kind of wanted to talk to you, Bolton, because you are have started to become our East Coast correspondent. You go to all the GNCC races. You look cute in a dress, and you know you're in West Virginia. So it's like everything just seems to be working towards. Uh, you know, having you on the show. Uh, so, West uh, Snowshoe, West Virginia. You know, Jordan wasn't there, so obviously it wasn't as good as it could have been. That's right. But That's right. Yeah. how was it? Tell me about uh, your experience at Snowshoe. Uh, I don't know if you want to hear about my whole experience at Snowshoe because it was like typical Snowshoe, if you know what I'm saying. Brian Elliott knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> But uh, but overall, it was. Uh, I want to know, know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm not going there, but I will say that it was typical snowshoe racing. Uh, I had some pretty interesting adventures during the quad race, like trying to tow people out and trying to get a quad out without a rider. So <laughs> it was pretty awesome. I actually towed. I towed one girl out, and we had to pull her quad over a tree. A down tree, and I actually, when I finally found the road, it was actually the state highway that leads to Snowshoe. So we were actually like six miles away from the village. Ugh. And then it sits, and the village is on top of the it's mountain. Of, so you we have were to. The, we were at the bottom of the mountain. So did you have to pull her all the way up the road to the all top the of the mountain? All the way up the road. Well, actually, we we had a uh, trailer sitting where we were loading people who were pulled out of the woods, but that was still like three miles away. Does that mean that you had like a, a like a, a va a plethora of people that were getting pulled out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's uh, that's snowshoe for you, especially for the quads. You know, it's a lot easier for the quads to like you know break an A arm or something. So yeah. Well, you're um, always, you're what what about out, dirt like, bikers? The were there a lot of dirt bikers getting pulled out, or as Jason Thomas said, was it not that technical this year? Uh, I don't know what Jason Thomas was talking about. I rode a lap on Friday, and I thought it was pretty technical. But I'd say there there definitely weren't as many guys on bikes that got pulled out just because, like I said, you know, it's not as easy to break something on those. Right. I don't, uh, I don't know what he meant by not technical because I just watched the video, and I didn't want to be there. No, I know. It was <laughs> extremely – I told him – that's the what I – so I got to watch the GNCC uh, live webcast, which is always awesome. I'm so glad that they're uh, getting a chance yeah. to be able to do that. Great way for guys like myself and, you know, Jordan being here in Texas to, to kind of live through some of the GNCC racing. Um, but I, I had moments on my couch where I was just <laughs> like, oh, he – oh, because it's like – you know, we even got to watch Caleb Russell crash a couple times. We got to watch some passes happen, which has just been, I mean, phenomenal. Uh, and and I, so I was like, that looks dangerous. And, <laughs> I mean, I want to do it, but I wasn't. I was sitting on my couch with a beer. So I don't know what he's talking about either. But, you know, I'm not from Wales. I don't know what's going on with that guy. Hey, yeah. And, you know, riding that lap on Friday really put things in perspective for me. Like, it was it – was pretty ridiculous and that was before anybody had ridden it so it was still there were no ruts and no not as many exposed rocks and i still thought it was pretty technical yeah well um did the the fact that the natural springs that always seem to kind of you know come up in some of the lower areas were they just like seeping like always oh yeah of course you know that they <laughs> i always say like it could not rain for a whole year and it's still going to be muddy at snowshoe <laughs> yeah i uh i'm just going to say it because i always talk about it i did a couple i did a Awesome! Whatever that was, thank you for that. Um, wow. Always loved doing the national downhill races that used to be there with Norba and stuff because they were as caffeinated as always, Mr. Bolton. They oh, were yeah. super, super muddy. And then when it does rain and all that stuff is going on there, it is literally a brake fest. Like you're just you're replacing brake pads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that Eric? Who is that? <laughs> For those of you that can, for those of you that only listen to the show, this is the time that you have to be watching the show because Jordan uh, decided to to take pictures with Frank, uh, one of my pugs, and Eric is now showcasing that on the screen for us. Thank you, Eric. Oh, no, it's my new screensaver. That's all that is. <laughs> it's like, that is I said that as my alarm. That she she allowed me to be her friend on Instagram. I'm allowed to. Make it. <laughs> you're, you're probably about to be unallowed. I it. 
lighthearted it. <laughs> She's very good at it. <laughs> on hard. I know more like you. I know more like you. So uh, I, I want to do I want to do some talking about all the racing that went on this past weekend. So we had X Games as well. Um, so lots of good stuff to talk about. But bolt on. You kind of kind of preface the fact that you're like this was a little bit of a typical snowshoe. Now I've never been. I don't know what that means. Obviously, you guys will live a little behind the story. You and Elliot. I don't know. You might have a sponsor from some kind of lubrication company, but I mean, what did you think of the? What did you guys, all of y'all, think about the racing? Uh, I want, I want everybody to fight this out and talk about kind of like how everything broke down. You good? That was it. Good. Yeah, it's good racing. Uh, good boy. That's awesome. You, you know, I was actually I was pretty impressed with Kayla Russell because at the beginning of that race, he was way, way far back. And then he wins it, so that's uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yes, and he, like he wrecked a couple times. I think Charlie Mullins yeah, actually, even wrecked a couple times too. Yeah, actually, uh, he said Sunday night that he saw Caleb wreck seventy five times. That that number may be skewed a little bit. <laughs> seventy three. Yeah, seventy two maybe. Seventy four. <laughs> Right. What is going on at Hell Elliot's yeah. house? I don't know, but there's like that. Whatever he is using as a camera right now has to be on acid. <laughs> he lives in a trash can. I think he's got it like spinning around on something. Is that? Yeah. Is that? Are you actually? Do you have a Leslie like uh, one of the old uh, '70s amps at your house, and you just have it connected, and it's like oh, dubstep. <laughs> Nothing. All right. <laughs> Morgan Moss, living it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gosh. You want to talk about a derailment train? I'm going to choo choo this like a monkey. So, I I was very very impressed as well with the way that Kayla Russell rode. Uh, watching the the live feed, it was great because I mean at first I know they were having a little bit of trouble with the cameras trying to get all the the feed going and everything like that, but once they were able to get it going, it was freaking fan. Fantastic, um, and like the fact that he seemed to be so far behind and have so much trouble from the very beginning, and he just started picking people off and just kind of working his way through the pack. And then he was like, and then Duval was up there in the front for a little bit, fighting with Mullins. Unfortunately, he had a mechanical, had to kind of come out. But, uh, he didn't really had to come out. They actually found him on the side of the trail and had to replace his shifter by banging it off with a rock. And then after banging it off with a rock, then they had to like bang on a new one. Uh, he was stuck, stuck in third gear for a while, so that's pretty impressive. And Charlie Mullins, he had a couple wrecks, but unfortunately it seems like Caleb Russell kind of just beat him at the end. Did you hear anything that Mullins might have had any issues at the end, or was that just Russell just giving it to him there? I think he was just pinning it to win it, like that simple. That's how that race always seems, too. Like Whenever I watch it, you never know who's going to win. Like, anything can happen. Somebody can come from four minutes back and end up winning, and it just because I, yeah, I don't know mud. I've never ridden in mud. So. You've never ridden in mud? <laughs> no, actually, you know what? I did a uh, one of the West Check Enduros a couple weeks ago, and it uh, it rained like eight inches the day before the race, and it hadn't rained all year, so it was destroyed. And basically, from the very start, I was just trying not to eat shit, and that was it. <laughs> just trying to. It was a right. reset enduro, so a restart. I mean, so I was just race. trying to make it to my checks on time. And that was it. So you guys still have timekeepers out west, or is this uh, a couple of years ago? Um, yeah, I mean we have them. We have them here and there because they're the diehard people. Like you know when the national enduros went to uh, restart, yep. those people that grumbled and groaned and you're destroying enduros and whatever. And then you know now they have 600 riders. So we're kind of we're kind of on that right now. We have we have uh, three timekeepers here, um, a couple up north. But for the most part, they're all going to uh, restart or qualify them. And uh, like ours is a qualifier, my clubs, and we get the largest turnout of any of the Enduros locally. So, so wait, you have a qualifier style format still at this Enduro? Well, yeah. That, well, that's what we do, our club. And basically, what it means is we can do whatever we want because nobody here knows what that means. So, it's pretty. Wait, nice. nobody nobody knows what doing whatever you want means, or nobody knows what a qualifier no, format what a qualifier is. is. Nobody knows what a qualifier is. Nobody has any idea. You know they. Basically, it's a restart. Well, it's just like ISD. We do it the same way, except for 
if you're late, you don't have to stay late. That's the only difference. Right. You don't. You don't. If you're if you're late three minutes, you don't then yeah. start always in that three minute later spot. Yeah. Exactly. And <clears throat> actually, one of our friends that has raced our race went and did ISDE last year for the qualifier. I mean, and so he was a minute late, so he showed up on time, so he got another point. And he's like, "Oh shit!" So he went back and got another point. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, yeah, it, it always it's, reminds it's, me. I got to give a shout out to my brother, my little brother, who qualified for ISDE this year. Yeah, Mr. So, Ryan, Ryan Kudla, right? Ryan, yeah, it was his. It was his first attempt. Uh, last year he went just to see what it was all about up north, and then this year he signed up LOI, uh, finished second overall E3, and then Jordan's not going, so Ryan's going. So, I'm opening this beer. You didn't get that. Uh, you didn't get that eight thousand dollar one that came with a free bike. <laughs> yeah, but it's a. Remember, I haven't ridden since like April, so it's somewhere over there by my uh, by my butt pack, uh, in the garage next to the bike that literally has duct tape on it. It's uh, a sign that says "Add Oil." Yeah, <laughs> I just got back from Mexico, so I had to carry this wherever I went. So. Is that how you change your oil, or is that just to open the beer? No, that's there aren't twist offs in Mexico. Like they just yeah. don't exist. That's because the flies will get in still. Somehow. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's interesting that you brought up the ISDE, and I definitely want to get Bolton's opinion on this. And Jordan, oh, yeah. have you ever you know been to the qualifiers? I've never been to. Have a ever been to a qualifier? Have you ever raced? Uh, you've been to a couple enduros. Yeah. Okay, you've been to a couple enduros, so you kind of know the. the the, the test atmosphere in that yes. sense with the, the sprinting that goes on there. Okay, so we have definitely talked with Ryan Sipes and we've talked with uh, who else? We talked with Zach Osborne a little bit about all this. Excuse me, we talked with a couple oh, the, other riders. Uh, the guy from Australia, I can't think of off the top of my head. Well, we did Jimmy Jarrett, Josh Strang, you know, all that kinds of fun stuff. Josh Strang, there you go. Yeah, yeah. and so we, we've kind of like gotten some opinions on, on uh, I guess, a lot of the, the hullabub that went on with selections of club teams and all that kinds of stuff this year, and maybe even some of the trophy teams. Um, all the professionals um, seem to that it's normal. Um, and I think that maybe because it's not the norm um, in the past couple of years, maybe, maybe for a very long time, the club teams have always been the teams that have been a qualifying type of team. Like you can qualify to race on the club team for America – and America always has the most amount of club teams um, over yeah. any other country by by a long shot. And so I'm wondering if that isn't something that kind of has people like confused as to why there is now a club team that is almost feels fully sponsored, like they're calling it the Weller team and all that stuff. And it has yeah. people that like a Ryan Sipes, a Nick Ferringer, um, and a Jimmy Jarrett, who are either currently professionals or are very close to being post professionals. Or have been on professional teams. Or have been on professional teams, yeah. And and so, you know, that's a hot topic on that kind of stuff for all the ISTE yeah. guys. So give me give me give me your redheaded opinion on that. Well which one? Him or me? This uh, guy? You mean yeah. you're on you're on camera right now, so that's fine. <laughs> oh I am. Oh, I can't tell. I don't know. Um well Okay, so I know that the other countries that's what they do. They just pick their dudes and you're going. And that really is the best way, like Kirk Caselli and other guys. These are the guys, that's who's going to be our team. Um, and for the club teams, it kind of is like, well, okay, so as a race promoter, like my club BCMC, last year we hosted a two-day qualifier because we wanted to put on an ISDE qualifier, like a real one, because we've been asked. Well, for us, what's the point? You know, right. if, if none of those guys, or most of those guys are going to, like Ross Neely, perfect example. He annihilated everybody in Idaho not going because the teams are already full. I mean, yeah. he beat second place by 100 seconds and he isn't going. And it sucks. I mean, why would we put on an ISDE qualifier if those guys aren't going to get to go or be on a trophy team or be on a junior trophy team? Is the person that he beat going? No. Okay, well, at least it's not... You know, kind of like reactive where they... No, they, but, they but Jordan beyond. Grant was second overall and actually got offered to go, but he went last year, so he didn't want it. So he got offered he to go... He still has bills. He, he still got, has bills. He got offered to go past the guy that beat him? Um, well, I think what happened was he... Ross 
thought he could get on a junior team because he's like 18 and and was offered to go on a club team I think and then said no but then couldn't go on a junior team and now the club teams are full or I don't there was some big thing I don't know exactly but it just it it just kind of but at the same time I understand I understand why we pick who we pick and why we send the guys that have been there in our experience because we want to win we really do because I don't think I don't think we've ever won nope like the whole thing we've won the junior team yeah. at one time in Chile but we never won the trophy team and so I understand. I absolutely understand. But on a promoter side, it's like, well, I don't want to put on a qualifying team. It's way more work. Why would I want to do that if it kind of doesn't mean a whole lot? And like what you guys said, that kind of bummed my brother out when you guys said, you know, some of the club guys don't really care. They're just going as a vacation. Like, my brother's been training all year for this. It's kind of like, oh, man, like... Yeah. yeah. No, and uh, uh, it's. Uh, I remember. I remember when that was said. I think that uh, that Jimmy Jarrett. We were talking with him when that was said, and uh, you know, I I kind of was when he said that. I was kind of like, ah, oh, that's a really bar. But that's, like, that's I, harsh for the guys that really try really hard. Like my brother busted his ass to do it, and he's been training since to entire change. He's down to five minute tire change for both tires. Yeah, taking them off and putting them on the bike. That's awesome. So, that's one that's really expensive training. just he's for a vacation. You know, yeah. Got <laughs> no, tons I mean, of sponsors behind us, all these people, all this support, and it's called just a vacation. You know, it's kind of like, eh, it, I don't know. Yeah, it's no, it's tough. Weird. And, and I, think, I think, and I don't know this, uh, that, and, uh, my only thing is I know I've heard that kind of, uh, that rhetoric when it comes to talking a lot about the, the AMA, maybe a lot of the people that go along on this trip with the AMA, and so I, I don't know this, but maybe there was a little bit of leeway to say that the AMA uses a lot of money to send people on these vacations yeah. um, to the ISDE, yeah. and, and opposed to maybe a lot of the club team riders, but yeah, I would never look at that as a vacation, because I did try to go qualify in Idaho last year, fantastic trip, 27 hour drive one way, 27 hours on the way back, it was an ass kicker of a good time, I will do it again in a couple years, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, there's no way that I went into that thinking this ten to fifteen thousand dollars I'm going to wind up spending is going to be, you know, an easy vacation type of trip. So yeah, just for fun, no big deal. Yeah. But at the same, but like I said, I absolutely agree with the AMA picking our team because who else would you pick? Like when I was talking to Nick Burson about Baja and talking about Beta going to Baja, he was like, "Well, okay, who are we going to take?" There's not another guy, really. There's a few guys, but there's if you're going to ISDE, you want to go win. So you have to send your top, top, top guys. And that's and actually, I think Jimmy Jarrett, he went and won the Ohio one, didn't he, Saturday? And then was second overall Sunday? Or was that Strang? One of the two guys. No, that was Jarrett. Yeah. Yeah, he did awesome. So, you know, I'm not saying anything about him because he, he killed it. So... Yeah, maybe um, they should leave the club teams, though, as the ones that qualify, and they can handpick the actual, you know, trophy and yeah. junior. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly how it works. There's a lot of politics behind the whole thing, but, you know, I, I understand. And we've been doing it since 09. I looked that up, you know, that, like, you because you guys were talking about it. I'm like, well, when did they start doing this? Because, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of weird. Well, it's new. I, I mean, like, I remember they used to have... What's up? Yeah, because, like, what, Auntie took over kind of, like, running the team. You know, he's the, the off-road manager for KTM. He yeah. kind of took over managing the, the the Team USA team, I guess, probably three years ago. I don't know the exact date, but about three years ago-ish. And now, what I – the way of talking to Ryan Sipes about it, you kind of – I kind of got the feeling, uh, and this wasn't just the way that he talked, that it's almost like he is in position to be in – not to get a lot of experience – if he winds up being on this club team, he's going to get a lot of experience and probably be on a trophy team next year if everything goes as planned. And, and you know, because Suzuki's probably going to, it sounds like they're, or Rockstar Energy Racing is going to put up a lot of money. Um, and so, hey, that's always good for those guys. And also, what if somebody gets hurt? Yeah, it, 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 I don't know why, but on the junior, dude, your brother's probably going to be on the junior trophy team because Stuart Baylor Jr. is not going to be able to race in six days. Like, well, that's what I thought was kind of weird. It's, Stuart it's, Baylor's on the team, but he hasn't raced all year. He hasn't ridden in a not, 16 not, months? Yeah, something like nothing like against him. He's something fast something. as heck. He annihilates everything, but he hasn't even, like you said, he hasn't even ridden in 16 months, you said? 
Uh, I'm sorry, it was 14 months. It was a year, a year and two months. Like, yeah, so 14 months. That just like that kind of I don't know. It's like saying like, oh, do you want a top 10 number, even though you haven't raced this year? It's kind of like I don't know. It's kind of I mean, if we if we did a thing like okay, the number one national hand hound, the number one enduro, the number one GNCC, the number one this, you guys are go, and that's how you earned it. Then it would increase ridership at those races instead of what's going to happen if they just pick people. No one's going to go to the qualifiers. Like, Ohio doesn't even break 200 riders because yeah. none of those guys are going. So, you know, why would it – like, there? what I heard, uh, my buddy Mason Harrison um, from District 36, he's gone to ISD a couple times. There used to be an ISD qualifier series, like six races, and you had to do good in two in a row. And now it's like you don't even have to do it at all. So it's kind of, it's kind of weird. I don't know. It's a weird thing. For on the promoter's end, it kind of sucks because now I don't want to put on them. So. Yeah, I can understand that. So, Bolton, have Bolton. you you're on the East Coast and you the GNTC, you you know a lot of people. I know you know a lot of these racers. You know what what are, what are your opinions and have you heard any kind of like behind the scenes talk? Do people give a shit? Like, uh, no, not really. Actually, I think as as far as my personal opinion goes, I think Eric hit the nail on the head there. Um. But as far as people talking about it, I've I've heard uh, I've heard some of the actually a few amateur guys that were just kind of discussing how they didn't like the fact that there were motocross guys on the team. But uh, also, say, I kind of brought up the fact that you have to want to go, and there's several guys that don't even want to go, so you kind of have to take that into account too. Really? So you've heard about people that don't want to go? Yeah, I won't yeah. mention any, I won't mention any names, but there's people that don't want to do work on their own bike. <laughs> it's not the motocross guys. Those are not the guys. <laughs> but Zach Osborne actually has raced. He raced GNCC, didn't he? This year he raced yeah, he's, two, uh, and, two uh, very well. or he got top three or something. So he's he's not a bad off road racer. I'm pretty sure Ryan Sipes has been off road too. So I mean, it's not it's it's a lot better for a motocrosser to go to off road than an off roader to try to jump and bike. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yes. <laughs> I've seen a lot more, like, Ty Davis, Destry <laughs> Abbott. Um, a lot of those guys that came from motocross annihilate in Mike Brown, you know, that, you know, if it was vice versa, they wouldn't be doing so hot. So, but, yeah. I, so, yeah, yeah. I think we're going to have a good team. I think it's going to be good, regardless. So. You know, one thing I think that's going to be really awesome what? It's tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow afternoon ish, probably about noon, is when uh, I've I've heard from a bird that uh, one of our awesome sponsors of Seat Time Fly Racing is going to update their website, um, and there's going to be some fun stuff out there for everybody to check out, and it's going to be you know I don't know it's this 2013 right now and next year's 2014, and obviously their new gear. At some point, it has to come out, um, and it could be tomorrow, and it could be on their site Maybe. for people to go check out tomorrow. Which would be on their site Wednesday, Wednesday tomorrow. noon. People should go check it out. Um, I've heard lots of good things. I've also heard that there's a chance that if you don't get to go check out their site tomorrow, you can watch Redbud this coming weekend. We've got all the motocross racing going on, and you can possibly see some of their. Uh, some of Fly Racing sponsored riders in some of the debuting some of that new gear that could pi- possibly be on their website tomorrow afternoon. Maybe tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to getting on their website and checking this kind of stuff out, Me too. And seeing what could possibly maybe be, you know, debuted as the 2014 Fly Racing gear. I think as long as they have the uh, tidy whities, I'm in. It's just like, you know, some some, uh, some grape smugglers. <laughs> <laughs> but so flyracing.com is the website where you can go check them out. It's obviously uh, probably the best thing you should do. Jared, uh, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite thing to wear on the weekends uh, of out of fly racing stuff? Uh, well, you know, fly is pretty much the bomb. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Man, just just filling it, filling the air with awesome. <laughs> He wears everything all at once. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I have one of everything on, regardless of the temperature outside. It doesn't matter. I, I wear a helmet. I like it. You look, you look good in everything. It's well, both of you guys because of the red hair. 
It really just makes yep. everything go together. I think so. Red hair. I think so. Yeah, it just kind of like pulls it together. Yeah. The, the what is it? The West Virginia ginger. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean, I, yeah, I'm trying to get back home, but that's where I'm at right now. That's true. Yeah, we're going to talk about that because that's going to be awesome. But so, flyracing.com, fantastic supporter of not just seat time, but obviously all the, the awesome off-road racing that's going on all over the, the the nation and the world as well. So we really appreciate their support. Please go check them out, flyracing.com. They're on Facebook. They're on Twitter. You can get all kinds of social up all up on them. And uh, I know that they're going to appreciate them. Uh, you having you having checked them out. And I, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I know I'm going to talk about it a lot when it comes out. Uh, oh, I guess a lot more when it comes out. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so Bolton, you are still on the way home from Snowshoe. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, you know, people tell me all the time, hey, your job's awesome. You know, you get to hang out at the GNCCs and work on the track crew. But what people don't realize is I was still there today until about 5.30 and we have to actually go back and seed and throw down hay on like anywhere we cross a ski slope and we're going up and down ski slopes and you go actually back to the edges of the woods, back into the woods, pretty much everywhere that you can see, we have to seed and do hay on. So basically I spent about about seven hours today on a, on a trailer with a blower that was a uh, was a good time. <laughs> that's typically my Saturday evenings, but yeah. you know if that's your Tuesday, <laughs> you know, I mean that's what you got to do, I guess. Yeah, good good times. And yeah, so left there about five thirty, and I'm about two hours from now. And you stopped to do seat time. Yeah, how about that? Stopped to hang out with you guys and do this awesome show. How about that? I know we can't appreciate it enough. And obviously Brian Elliott, who did drop off, I know that he was moving. We had all kinds of funky connection stuff going on. We can't appreciate those kind of guys. You know, y'all taking that kind of time. We've got Eric talking as well. Um, so we did have his, uh, in the XC2 class, uh, Grant Baylor pulled off the first over Jason Thomas. And then Patty Holloway got his first XC2 uh, podium in third place this past weekend at Snowshoe. Was there anything that you think really suited Patty Holloway different? Or is it just like what we were talking about, how Snowshoe just kind of like seems to bring out, you know, the randomness every now and again in people, or yeah, it's no shoe. Uh, you never know what's going to happen, really. Honestly, that's that's what it is. You know, Patty's a great rider, and uh, it was going to come eventually. But I think uh, snowshoe would have been the easiest one for him. It's like the mud supercrosses with Wyndham wins. Oh yeah, just out of nowhere, like whoa, or like Southwick, where some local qualified top three. Randy Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the wicked assholes. Rip, ripping the bong. <laughs> Stop tweeting over there. What are you doing? Get back to work. I'm looking at pictures of you. Oh, creepy. Yeah, <laughs> you liked it. Maybe you did. Um. So, the thing was, Grant Baylor going back and forth with Jason Thomas. It's. <laughs> are we gonna talk about this? Are we gonna talk about this? Look at that little guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's so cute. So, Jared Bolton, for those of you who don't know, actually has his own like, sticker. Like that little. Um, and there it is. It's, it's, it might be a little perverse to some, and it might be perfect to others. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how big it really is. I'm, I'm squishing your head right now. Um, so, Grant Baylor, Jason Thomas... Do you guys, what, how, how do you think that that kind of, do you think that broke down the way it should have? Do you think that Jason Thomas needed more technical track? I mean, what was going on there? Uh, you know, Grant actually kind of, in a way, did the same thing that Caleb did because Grant was a little behind at one point after being way up in front. And actually, on time adjustment, there was a point where Grant was actually leading overall. Not sure if it came through scoring that way, but uh, he was on the track. He was with time adjustment overall, but uh, then he kind of lost some time and then put a charge on and caught back up to Thomas, and, you know, Grant is definitely uh, past few races on fire, so I think we could see more, more of these come behind wins, or just wins out of him. You know what? Remember, we got Cooper Bailey, um, Jordan's 
Jordan's husband sitting over here, and we were talking about uh, Patty Holloway and Shane Hufford Jr. earlier. It was totally Shane Hufford. That was third place, not Patty Holloway, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, those guys are about the same. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you know, so who actually got third? They're guys, you know, whatever. Let's let's get the official results. Um, but I think it's interesting that you're talking about Grant Baylor in that fashion because he, we talked to him, I don't know, a couple episodes ago, probably about ten, and you could tell he's like, I am gonna keep kicking ass because I want to make a name for myself and not be Stuart Baylor Jr.'s younger brother. And I think he's proven himself to be. <laughs> Yeah. He might win a championship before Sue does in that yeah. lights class. Yes. It's looking pretty good. I think it's possible. You very well could see Grant taking that championship this year. Shane Hufford. Yep. Bam. Hey, what's up? You want to screw up the results some more, Brian? <laughs> sure, let's do it. So congratulations to Shane Hufford on your third place. He'll never watch seat time ever again. Yeah, well, he, he won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. Like, <laughs> I should have known that. I know that's kind of why I was like bolt on. Wait, that's, I was like, I was like Cooper and I were talking about the podiums at the XC2 and just hoping that you would like start to like, get where I was going. But no, nope, nothing. He's tired. He's been laying that yeah. seat all day, so we got to give him a break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only been up since like six o'clock. It's all good. Yeah, that's what people always think. They're like, oh, you're always out in the desert having a great time putting on races. Yeah, okay. It's great. I've been here for 10 days. It's awesome. Do you have any idea? I've gone through so much underwear. I'm out of deodorant. (laughs) My teeth haven't been brushed in 12 days. Yep. That's actually... I ran out of water two days ago. That's teeth... That's that's teeth fungi, isn't it? That's not actually facial hair. No, yeah. It's coming from my teeth. Yeah. (laughs) Mine's not. Mine's actually coming up from my chest. And it oh. grows into my face. That's impressive. It is. Face to your feet. Just, yes, it's, it's pretty gross. I'm like a little hobbit. <laughs> I guess I'm like a big hobbit. Not really. I have no chest hair, so it's actually all facial hair. Um, we did have a request, though, randomly. I don't know what this means, so I hope I don't offend anybody, but Jordan, was. we were asked to see if you could strike a pose with your handgun. What? What? What is this? I don't know. Who asked this? Dale Spangler. What? Yeah, with come on, tell handgun. Jordan she needs to strike a pose with her handgun. Is, is he referring to all my pictures with my sweet guns? Uh, or those, those guns? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, don't maybe know it was. Guns. Maybe it's your. Maybe sends out guns out. I don't know which guns he refers to, so I guess we'll have to do both. Oh god, don't punch me! <laughs> Dang, I didn't even do push-ups. Make my arms look bigger. Well, do we need to, do we need to take a, a break so I you can so. warm up? I think so. We gotta get the push. I'm I'm embarrassed to even show them. All right. Jordan's going to do push-ups on the floor really quick to get her guns out. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and talk about one of our other fantastic sponsors. So, Power Sport Graphics, for those of you who do not know, obviously a fantastic, fantastic <coughs> supporter. She's actually doing it, folks. Fantastic supporter of Seat Time. You can check them out at RidePG.com, and you can get 10% off. At, I, I wish we had video of this. She is actually doing push-ups. Uh, so God, I dis- my belt today. <laughs> It's okay. She's got pants on. So seat time, S-E-A-T-T-I-M-E, is the discount code that you can use to save 10% off of all of the awesome that goes on at RidePG.com. And uh, we do know that Bolt-On actually has a little bit of uh, of a job over there. You're you're never going to get that back in in the right position, Stephen. That's all right. (laughs) There's too much junk in this room. That was worth it. Yep, it was. So... One of the things I think that's also neat is not only do they have their own seat time discount code that you can use to save 10%, you can also save 40% by using their ready-to-ship option. So what that is is you can go check out a lot of the graphics that they have, and you can go, ooh, I want that. I'm going to choose ready-to-ship. So it doesn't give you – muscles go away. Yeah, I know. Okay, well, there it is. Guns up. Woo! Woo! This is for you, Ride PG. Power Sport Graphics. <laughs> Shooting them up. Uh, they're so much bigger than mine. Uh, we should arm wrestle. I, I don't want to lose. <laughs> that sounds like a horrible idea. <laughs> Why would I do that? So, Dale Spangler, that was for you. And uh, obviously, we cannot thank Patrick, Jared Bolton, all the guys over at Power Sport Graphics, uh, Mr. Hayes himself, uh, and all the fun. Please go check out ridepg.com. Tell them that Seat Time sent you over there. You don't have to buy anything. You just go over there and be like, high five for being awesome and supporting Seat Time. We love you. 
Thank you. And uh, and follow them on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook because my job depends on that. <laughs> I don't know. He said real handguns. See, that's and, what I figured. And assault weapons. Yeah, I guess I could get a picture out because I don't have a money. Are you? Are you I, I'm, I'm kind, kind of, of a Do you BA. think he wants you to flex your, flex your thighs? Is, there, is that like... I don't have leg very guns? good leg muscles. I know. I was like, this is kind of awkward. Hey, we'll Bolton, show us your guns. Uh, they are non-existent. We understand if you have to do push-ups first. <laughs> yes, everybody at Starbucks probably thinks you're <laughs> on a dating website right now. <laughs> I'm sure all these people thought I was an idiot a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it was not kissing your muscles that had it go downhill. Here's one cool one. Uh, uh, it's it's still still the same look as before. Okay, Eric, you now have a job as we talk about this. Go into what? Jordan's Instagram and look through her pictures, and she actually does have pictures of her shooting her assault rifles, and bring that up on the screen. I gotta find my phone. Uh, dude, Here. it's over. I just dropped it. So most embarrassing moment this past weekend, Bolton? Probably the fact when I drugged that girl out of the woods and brought her down to the road. That Did you just say like, drug that, that girl? girl? <laughs> We said PG thirteen. Okay. okay. Let me start it. <laughs> when I towed that girl, <laughs> much <laughs> better. That one. And she woke up. Oh, the real guns. Oh, there's a good one. The ones that uh, shoot bullets. Yeah, let's, in the corner too, let's get a good one of that shirt. While working. Wait, don't put me up. <laughs> That's weird, man. Uh, yeah, keep yeah. going in there deeper, and you're gonna find yeah. some of Jordan with her assault rifle. So you drugged a girl in the woods. I, I towed this girl out of the woods. And, uh, actually, Is that what the kids was, are calling it these days? <laughs> I was like two miles off the course. The course never even went down to that highway that I towed her out to. So that was kind of embarrassing because I towed that girl a very long way off course. Man, you just went all the wrong way with it. The person that's going the right way is the person that's on the screen right now, and that's Miss Jordan Bailey. Is that your gun, Cooper, or is that hers? It's yours? I got it for him for Christmas. So. <laughs> what? Hey, what's, what's his is mine, right? That's about to say. You guys are married, so <laughs> technically it's probably just hers. And you can call it. Not if it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, we, we don't mean to go too far off topic, but when you have that much kind of fun stuff to talk about, I think we have to do it. You know, it's like guns, push-ups, stuff. It's, that's not the All normal stuff. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. It's the Texas. <laughs> Hello, that's what we do. Um, so Enduro Cross, uh, I know you guys have been on the road. You guys have been kind of keep it, trying to keep up with all this kinds of stuff. Did you guys get a chance to watch Taylor Robert totally kick ass in Munich? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's I was it. Stoked. Yes, dude, that pass that he made on Taylor. Brown was sick. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. I think I missed that part. I just thought he was winning the whole time. That's what I thought. He didn't no. actually watch it. I no, no, he did. Well, let's watch he, it right now. He let's might watch have, it. Yeah, F being on seat time, I'm just going to watch Enduro Cross. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> we just lost a guest because of you. Jeez, man. Just I piss it all you. off. We already lost Elliot. Jeez. And Shane. Yeah, Shane. And, and Patty Holloway. That guy hates us. <laughs> Shane Hufford, he's never going to have anything to do with us again. Um, so, yeah, no, Mike Brown got the whole shot, totally put all of his, you know, 125 championship uh, motocross skills to good use and uh, came out there. But he got into that rock pile, which you could see him earlier on kind of trying to pat down some of the ruts leading up to it beforehand. And uh, he got a little stuck, and Taylor Robert just picked an awesome line, just kind of jumped into the rocks, hit the middle section, and just brapped his way up, totally past Brown. And that was it. He was just, dude, I think it might have been the second lap. We'll go with the second lap. But uh, as well, the water hole that they had had a turn in it. That was the most fantastic That's thing sweet. ever. I was like, why have this not happened in all the years that Enduro Cross has been going on? It was so great. Um, I kind of miss that they that they couldn't like jump into the water and keep going, but at the same time, it was pretty wicked. Maybe Something now new. that they, they need to put a banked wall. Yeah. So they could like jump and turn and like the corner. 90 to 40. 90 degrees. I was homeschooled. I don't know. Ah, zero cross. Oh, that's cool. There we go. This is totally illegal. <laughs> you think it's on YouTube. Everything's legal. 
Oh, yeah, he's already in the lead by this point. Yeah. That's all I care about. Very well. Yeah. Brap! <laughs> My name's Taylor <laughs> Robert! Yeah, he's killing it. Same thing with Last Dog Standing. Killed it there. Yeah, he did. He was, he was yeah, great at King Motors, too. Yeah, Taylor Roberts, awesome, man. He has been doing such yeah. a fantastic job this year, and it's, it's great in the sense that it was so close to him not having a ride or not having, you know, a full-on non-privateer ride, like a full factory. Well, yeah, so, well, the thing was is that Monster gave Kawasaki all this money, and then Kawasaki said, yeah, we're not going to do an off-road team, and Monster said, are you kidding? What do you mean? So originally they were off, and then they were back on. So Now that is... I'm glad that somebody ever said it out loud and it didn't have to be me. Um, Why? Is that a secret? Was that a secret? Should I not say that? I mean, I don't know if it's a secret. I just... Oh. You know? Mm. It's not a secret anymore. <laughs> Nobody watches this. It's just us four. I know. It really <laughs> is. <laughs> and Dale Spangler. Apparently. Oh, five guys. I got you. Because uh, he, he was extremely excited by, uh, by your guns. He was. And your push-ups and all your balancing acts on the floor. You know... I'm, I'm a well-rounded person. Well-grounded? Yeah. Well Nobody's going to tell me Rounded. Anything. I got Rounded. lots of skills. Yeah. You're not that fat. <laughs> I, I try not to be. <laughs> You're not round. You're not round at all. So how many push-ups can you do, Eric? Oh, I don't know. Uh, during, like, CrossFit or my gauntlet training, we have to do, like, 100 in a reps of 500 other ones. But right now, probably none because I'm sick. Oh, you can't like get like a theraflu high and like do a bunch of push-ups. That's, that's what I've been doing all day. <laughs> You're like, watch me, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. knock it back, baby. knock Just, it back. Like, whoa, <laughs> like on Dayquil and theraflu all day long. He's gonna go uh, back and I'm... watch this and be like, "What was wrong with me?" <laughs> yeah, what was happening? <laughs> no, because I gotta. I'm getting ready. I'm leaving for Reno on Friday morning, so I'm just getting ready. All being sick this whole time. It's crappy. I don't like it when you're sick, Eric. Uh, um, so we're talking about some of the enduro cross again. We get the women uh, as well. We're gonna get to the men's here in a second, but uh, Forsberg totally kicking Is butt there as well. Anything that Maria cannot do, that's uh, not enough. She can't have sex with me because she's married and I am too. Yep, <laughs> on a dirt bike. Oh right. Oh, is there anything she can't do on a dirt bike? Okay, okay, yeah. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, no, no, it's impressive. Nothing. nothing. She can do everything on a dirt bike. Yes, and she can call me anytime on a dirt bike. <laughs> Absolutely. What I like is uh, is is there a little ESPN ad um, that she's got her pictures with her guns and stuff, mm -hmm. and that's where I'm like, God, those are bigger than mine. This is yeah. Ridiculous. She is gnarly. Yeah. No, she's pretty awesome. And then we had uh, La Leia, Leia. Laya Sands, Laya Sands in second, and Sandra Gomez in third. What was really neat is uh, Alf Alfredo, 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 her brother, Alfredo Gomez is her brother, and so this was the first ever brother sister. There he is, right there. Metal ship thing. That's pretty cool. Medaling opportunity, and then uh, Taddy Blazuziak in third uh, in men's. It's kind of interesting yeah. that Taylor, uh, that Taddy Blazuziak. Just is not dominant. Like in Endurocross for the past couple of years, he has just been he's just been dominant. He's been the dominant person to beat, and right now he is not that person. Um, but I think he, it just goes like that because that's how David Knight was, and then he wasn't that person, and then there was Tate uh, um, Zuziak, and then he wasn't that person, and now right now it's Jarvis and Walker, and. Those guys. Yeah, but Jarvis yeah. and Walker have never, like never been enduro cross. They've been, they've been great at oh, hard enduro. Yeah. They've never yeah. been like enduro cross kind of. But you're right about Knight. Knight was, Knight was the man to beat too he in enduro crosses. And, he was uh, GNCC enduro cross, hard enduros, everything, regular yeah. enduros, like everything. I remember too, like what was it? It was <coughs> uh, Vegas enduro cross, probably three, four years ago. When Tad Bazuziak came over and first kind of like oh, that did the one, whole series, yeah. and like he took away the triple crown from David from Knight, David Knight. Yeah. and he, he just like launched times. his bike, just like he was so yeah. pissed because it was like ten grand or something crazy on the yeah. line. I would have. It's like the the B team support rider just passed me. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> it's like son of a bitch. He's like, I would have split it with you, dick. Yeah. <laughs> That guy probably didn't get any. Like, yeah. he just got. They let him ride the bike, and then that was it. Yeah, <laughs> just like Erzberg years and years before. Um, oh yeah. So I thought the track was fantastic. 
Um, it was, it was, I don't know if it was the moisture in the ground with all the ruts. It just seemed like they did a better job. They slowed the racing down. And I think that was because of the moisture in the track. I think the moisture in the track and the ruts really kind of slowed the riders down. So they couldn't carry as much speed into the technical bits. So it kept them together more. And then they got into the technical bits together. They kind of bang bars a little bit more. So it made it feel like much more awesome racing. Um, yeah. and so I hope That's they can, how the first one was. I don't know. I feel like the first one was kind of fast, too. Yeah. I mean... Because like, they're, like, going around a big Olympic auditorium. Yeah. I want more turns, you know, and I hate to say that because, in, in you know, in Supercross, they're always like, we need more 180s. They're better for passing. And yeah. I'm like, gosh, I kind of wish there was more 180s. <laughs> like, I, did, <laughs> I don't want to agree to that, but at the same time, I want to agree to it. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh... The good stuff. We're going to be coming to L.A. soon for, I think, it's, I don't, it's not really round four of X Games, but it's the fourth X Games world. It's the X Games? Yeah. In L.A.? So you're going to go bolt on? Uh, nah, that's uh, that's the wrong side of the country for me. I don't it's, know what I'm doing out there. It's not, it's not in your schedule? <laughs> no, no, okay, no joke. Okay, no, no, no. Well, that too. But uh, no joke, I've never been further west than Adam Benur's house in Illinois. Wow. You know what that just, that means as much as I think I'm around. That just means you're cultured. You're cultured <laughs> to a specific area. <laughs> <laughs> you need the, a the, flat build hat come out this way. Yeah. Out west. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah, it is kind of no, scary. Actually, actually, Charlotte, North Carolina has a bid on the X Games for next year. Well, you know what? They're not so getting it. Austin. What's yeah, up? Austin's getting that shit. Who's gonna <laughs> pick Charlotte over <laughs> Austin? <laughs> Honestly, they, I yeah. would. <laughs> yeah. the they used good. to uh, they used to move them around every year, and lately they've just all been in LA. Like well, I, it's the same thing with the Enduro Cross. Enduro Cross used to come all across the country, but then they realized that you know they could fill up this, they could fill up at least three quarters of the stands and all the rider slots if they just stayed more out west for whatever reason, and so that's what they did. And I yeah. think that uh, X Games kind of learned that too. Yeah, I went to the uh, Florence, South Carolina Enduro Cross the two years they had it, and I'm pretty sure we all could have gone home in the same car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know some people that followed the Enduro Cross series the first few years, and whenever they went out east, there was like, they said there was like nobody there. Even well, when they go north, they said it's way less people. So. Well, I can tell you, and I've said it to multiple people, I have always raced the Oklahoma City. Enduro Cross when it was here. I raced a really sweet ghetto Enduro Cross in Oklahoma. What was that, Cooper? Stillwater. Stillwater. Yeah. How'd you do? I don't want to talk about it. Did you beat Cooper? It. No. We uh, don't Guy race Cooper the same class. Up. Guy Cooper showed up. Yeah. Not Cooper Bailey. Guy uh, Cooper yeah. did too, but Guy Cooper won. Guy Cooper won. spanked me and Joyner. Oh, I bet. I mean, it's Guy Cooper. He's 50 years old. Right? It was like the most ghetto <laughs> Enduro Cross yeah, well, ever. But it is Guy Cooper. <laughs> what about Todd Slavic? Was he there? No. Because if Guy Cooper shows up, he's pretty much there dangling on his... <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. He's a big Guy Cooper fan. <laughs> we all love Todd Slavic. We just lost another fan. That's it's okay. <laughs> Todd Slavic's been on the show. He's an automatic. He just has to always be a fan. It's, it's just what happens. Um, well, we've got all kinds of other stuff to talk about, really. Um, Jared Bolton, as you're uh, trying to talk to some chick next to you... Um, uh, no, I'm actually getting kicked out. They're closing. <laughs> Those is it 9 o'clock? It's 10 o'clock. It is 10 o'clock. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up just because of the fact that Jared Bolton's getting kicked off for, for his sake. All right. We appreciate it. Uh, oh, you're like literally walking. Like walking. <laughs> this is awesome. Keep it on here. Give us a tour. Give us a tour. Tell us. Just tell us what's going on. Get somebody on the show, dude. Come on. Just remind them they have to have their headsets. That was uh, that was pretty classic right there. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you totally just got kicked out of a Starbucks live on the internet. Dude. Hey, yeah, last time I just parked outside of one, I had to get Wi-Fi. Oh, there's your stuff here. Yeah. Well, I've got I've got one of those four-wheeled machines in the back of my truck. I don't I don't understand that. <laughs> How <are> your A arms? <laughs> How many people are looking at you right now with your laptop in your hands? Uh, two. 
That's an honest number. <laughs> we don't lie on this show ever. It's n- <laughs> we're mathematicians. Mathematicians don't lie. Okay, well, bolt on. Uh, are, are, are you wanting to go? Because if you need to go, we'll let you go. Oh, no, look at this. I'm, I'm sitting in the truck now. <laughs> <laughs> He's still dedicated. Still their Wi-Fi. Yeah, they're still stealing their Wi-Fi. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many people sit outside of uh, Starbucks after they close just for their Wi-Fi? I know of at least two people, and both of them are on this show right now. <laughs> It works. It works pretty good. It does. Okay, so uh, Bolton is obviously going to try to stay on as long as possible. Um, but uh, how how are things going for you at Ride PG? Are you guys having fun over there at Parsport Graphics? Oh yeah. Let me tell you. Hey, last week, uh, one of the couple of days I was there, the internet went out one day. So we literally couldn't do anything, except for the design guys. So uh, I scooted it around in a rolly chair. And actually scooted all the way over to GDR and WPUSA on the other side. Oh, WPUSA. Cool. Have you seen any of the air shocks? Uh, they are pretty sick. So, yes. I'm just kidding. I haven't seen one at all. What the uh, hell? Why do you have to lie to me like I that? I thought we just said we weren't liars. Yeah. This we show is all about that. truth. That wasn't a lie. That was a joke. Mm. It's a different. <laughs> Your jokes yeah. suck. <laughs> okay, your jokes suck. So, okay, Rattlesnake Enduro's coming up, uh, round eight of the National Enduro Series. That is uh, Cross Fork, uh, Pennsylvania. That is your neck of the woods. Uh, do you? What are your kind of thoughts on the trail that's going to be going on there? Uh, that's like nine hours away from me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Seriously, though, no, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, it's very, very rocky there, I believe. So... It's probably going to be pretty awesome, is what I'm thinking. And there's going to be lots of rocks for those guys. And I'm going to be wishing I was riding it instead of doing something else. Yeah, as opposed to not riding it? Uh, no, actually, uh, part of my job with Racer, I, don't, I, I do all the GNCCs, but I also have to do all the ATV motocross races, too. Ah. So, I will be at an ATV motocross race instead. Well, I guess... Uh... We can officially stop having you on the show then. I can't believe you actually admitted that. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what's funny though. Like now, public knowledge. I've got a quad in the back of my truck. What the heck? <laughs> that thing. That thing. Was... In, in all serious, the story behind that is uh, that's actually my best friend's quad. Her truck broke down, so I hauled it up a snowshoe for her. Is this the one that you you drug drove you in the woods? <laughs> no, this is a different. Oh, Does no, she know she's serious. your best friend? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So hey, like, I did have to. I did have to drag this one out of the woods too because she actually crashed and hurt her shoulder. Uh, says the collarbone's not broken, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's broken. And uh, I had to go in the woods and get it out uh, with a wrecker. And when you tow a quad with a wrecker, you need somebody to sit on the front of your quad so it doesn't like raise up. And I didn't have a rider to sit on the front of my quad, so. It did not go very well at all, and it bounced off a few trees, and <laughs> I bounced off of a few trees, and then I realized it was a stupid idea. So I uh, detached it, and I rode her quad out of the woods and walked back in and got mine and towed it back out, towed it the rest of the way out. So that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Like I said, Snowshoe littered with awesome stories like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing but a good time. I really do want to make that race one year. I really think that that would be one of those fantastic races to kind of plan like a good family vacation around. Like it's it's obviously a long drive, but if we could like do you know do the long drive out there and hang out for a couple Dude, days and then drive back so and stuff. Do out there. It's so yeah. it's so worth it. And uh, Spangler says you owe him a bottle of Jim Beam. Well, if unfortunately the way the show has gone this evening, he's probably had to go through that entire Jim Beam. <laughs> Just, just to kind of like you know make it tolerable. So, we <laughs> what's that? Probably so. And you know what? Anytime you put me on there, that's you probably need to drink heavy alcohol to deal with it. Well, you did just get kicked out of a Starbucks. Yeah, <laughs> partying way too hard. Yeah, I mean, I think we know who's got the Jim Beam. Problem. I didn't even, I didn't even get kicked out of a bar at Snowshoe. Like, come on. <laughs> kicked okay, out of a actually, Starbucks. We didn't, we didn't get kicked out, but everybody had to leave uh, after some people got into a fight at, like, I don't know, it was probably 2, Saturday. Yeah. Actually, that'd be Sunday morning. 
<laughs> it was a pretty good fight, and I watched uh, I watched the snowshoe police slam some guy to the ground. Man, uh, speaking about mountains and police, uh, I was at Angel Fire uh, Mountain Bike, uh, Angel Fire Mountain in Red Ri- outside of Red River, New Mexico, and we were there for the final descent, uh, old downhill race that used to go on there. Now it's like part of Chili Challenge or something like that. Um, but there used to be a costume party on the night after the big downhill race. And I, of course, wanted to come up with a good outfit, so I went to a lady who made dresses for men because she sold these dresses to, to cross-dressing men. And so I had this 80s prom dress that was you know, made to fit a man's body, and it looked awesome. And I had a wig on, and I had lipstick that looked like an entire hockey team and had a good time, like... It was, I was in an epic costume, and I got so hammered that I tried to steal one of the bar stools. And so I'm taking, well, and in my head, I'm just taking it home with me. I'm like, I'm leaving! I'm gonna get my bar stool! And I just started walking out of the bar with the bar stool, and I get stopped by the cops. And all my buddies are with me because they're like, well, we need to – they see me leaving, so they're like, oh, we're going to go. So they're kind of like that 10 feet weird distance behind me like, oh, shit, Brian's getting stopped by the cops. This is going to be interesting. And they kind of like get close enough to hear what's going on. And the cop literally just walks up and goes, hey, buddy, what are you doing? And I was just like – and I just dropped the bar stool. And I'm like, nothing? I was just going to go home. He's like, well, you're not – you're not driving, are you? And I just and they said that I like stood up and squared off, and they're like, "Nope, I'm just gonna coast home." Like that was my response to the cops. Like, and the funny the, the funny thing is, is they let me drive home. <laughs> they they let me get in the car and it's leave the mountain. The but the good thing is, it's like literally. I mean, and I wasn't kidding. I was actually being very serious to the cops. Because it was like a three-block coast home. Coast all the way down. Like, I mean, down the mountain, and they're like, ah, no, you're here. So, but those pictures are somewhere. Um, if somebody were to scour the internet for them, you would be able to find them. And uh, so that's my... I'm afraid uh, of what we'd have to search. I don't know. I'm going to let you get creative. Um, but that was my story about telling the cops that I could coast home. But it seemed like a good story because you were talking about mountains and stuff. Mountains and mountains bars. Are cool. Who got into Who got into the fight? Come on. I, I don't know who they were. They were actually a couple of randoms. You mean You mean locals? <laughs> uh, I think they were actually some GNCC regulars, to be honest. But uh, not really sure who they were. Yeah, me neither. I don't know who they are. Bird. But, uh, but what was awesome was like it was me and my roommate. Decker from PG, and uh, actually, like, uh, three of the KTM mechanics, so it was pretty cool. Were you there with Charles? Mm, possibly, yeah. <laughs> well, I know who the other two are, so I'm just gonna, I guess I should stop naming names. Yeah, oh yeah. Tanner, you son yeah. of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, love it. Actually, actually, we had, I had, uh, I brought a bunch of beer with me, and uh, actually, we made that all disappear from my room. It it just it somehow it disappeared. So you invited them back to your room? Yeah. Hmm. And you drugged a woman in the woods. Yeah, exactly. Who are you? And, uh, and actually, Who is this and, and mystical Big Baylor. Big Stu Baylor made boiled peanuts, and uh, he kind of left them sitting outside of his camper. So we actually went out there and just kind of helped ourselves. That is fun. What is that? I don't know what that was. It was awesome, though. <laughs> this is the best time. All right. Well, because of the fact that it is now 9.15 and we... <laughs> Whoa. So Sasquatch. Whoa. Did you just... What did you just do to your... You don't have a standard, do you? Yeah. You do. Oh. <laughs> God. It's just so awkward to watch that right now. <laughs> oh. It's a good thing you didn't come up, like, missing a tooth or something, because I would have just been, like, so freaked out by that. Um, so, Eric... We got a big race coming up that you're doing out there west at the the Reno Extreme. Uh, yep. Recap a little bit about where people can get some more information on that, where people can find you on the internet, and uh, you know just just get more awesome from you. 
Yeah, well, right now, uh, my website is down for some reason. So you can find me on Facebook. And all it's because the, the server's down, because you're on yes, seat time. Because- and they're like, oh, my God, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, they've been having it. They had some power outages on the East Island, whatever excuse. But it happens. So <clears throat> you go to the Facebook and find us, Get Extreme. We're on Twitter. I'm not on Instagram, but I am. But, I mean, Get Extreme isn't. But all the information is on Facebook. Uh, you've been reposting a lot of it, which is, I think, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but it's not this weekend. It's next weekend, July 12th to 14th. And it's uh, the Reno 500 truck race along with the Reno Extreme bike race at the same time, going on concurrently. And uh, it's going to be huge. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> that lady in the back. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? No, uh, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah. I don't see what's going I don't on. See it. Nothing's going on over here. <laughs> but uh, was somebody like was somebody like, like up into up, up into her uh, his window in Bolton's window. Oh my god, that's so creepy. Oh no, it was just one of the fat employees. <laughs> now, now we're making fun of people. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, look, there's a garbage. I'm not making fun of her. I'm describing her. <laughs> it's it's not making fun of her if it's a truth, right? She was wearing a gray shirt and she was fat. I don't know what. She's anyway. on a phone too. Yeah, loser. Yeah, um, uh, you're on the he, internet. Yeah, yeah, why would she be on a phone? <laughs> yeah, he, this guy just liked me as a friend right now too. Yeah. We're friends now on Facebook. America, America. <laughs> and uh, in case anybody was wondering, Jared Bolton, uh, Bolton, and I decided that it is not M U R I C A. It is M E R I C A. We've yeah. had some uh, back and forth about that, and we've just decided to make it an official decision. Yeah. America, 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 America. <laughs> we uh, we actually had a uh, uh, <coughs> from uh, the restaurant in Snowshoe come hang out with us Sunday night. Uh, that's as far as I'll go with those details. But her name was Erica, and I was like, "Hey, we should put an M in front of your name, America." <laughs> <laughs> and what did she say to you? Uh, I don't remember. But you did not get her number. <laughs> no, uh, somebody else did. No, oh, come. Come on. <laughs> that would be Derek Allen. Derek Allen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the easiest <laughs> convincing ever. It's like, hey, Derek Allen. Yo, it was Derek Allen. It's love. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. Uh, it was very interesting. We, we didn't know where he was for like two or three hours. Nobody ever does. Yeah. Nobody ever does. <laughs> Not him specifically, but just more people. You're like, where'd they go? I don't know. All of a sudden, they just show back up. You're like, man, that was the longest urination ever. Woo! Uh, why's your shirt on backwards? Oh, it's it's just inside out. I mean, oh god, nothing. Don't worry about it. Just racing off road here. It's cool. Um, so yeah, so Jared Bolton's gonna be doing some ATV MX racing apparently, and he says that he's going to work, but he's actually <laughs> gonna be I racing off road. Uh, I think he's a fan of the ATVs. I know he is. Isn't that guy kind of cute? Yeah. You know what? Actually, when I rode this one out of the woods, that's like the second time I'd ever been on a race quad in my whole life. And how was and, it though? Oh, tell me, tell me about actually, that. Actually, I ran when I was pulling it when I was riding out of the woods. I ran into uh, Charlie Mullins and Caleb Russell, and they kind of looked at me like, <laughs> "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no clue what I'm doing." And Charlie's like, "Yeah, I've never ridden one of those at all." So I felt a little better about it. And he was probably lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. We can only hope. So Eric's got tons of racing going on too on the West Coast. I hope you guys can make it out there to the yep. Reno Extreme. Yeah. Um, well, and we have the, the Baja Rally Demotos coming up too in October. Tell, tell me about that. Tell and, me about that. Uh, it's a first time rally that uh, uh, Scotty Bloom and Bro Man is helping organize, and it's in Mexico. Um, we're doing a dry run in a couple weeks uh, to see how it works, and it's uh, invite only, and there's all kinds of rally guys coming, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Awesome. Can well, so can be good. Lots more racing. It's obviously kind of summer okay. break for a lot of people. Um, we got a, a little bit of National Enduro, a little bit of Hare and Hound going on, but a lot of people are going to be closing up shop because it's getting it's going to be getting hot. It was actually fantastic in Texas today. This week, it was so strange. Yeah, but not Saturday. Um, no. One hundred five. Yeah, that was horrible. But uh, so it's going to be fun. I think that most people have kind of put their dirt bikes away. They've pulled out their jet skis where they can. Um, we don't have any of those water toys, but uh, maybe one day, you know, we will get rich. We can only hope. Yeah. We'll just 
just kind of keep living off of your fame. <laughs> See what happens. I won't get us far. Yeah, that's okay. You got bigger <laughs> guns than I do. That's going to get us somewhere. Um, obviously, I think Eric, that you talked a little bit about your website going down, and that is that is absolutely the most fantastic key into the fact that your website is not on Squarespace. So Squarespace is a fantastic not. sponsor of Seat Time, and uh, what you could do there, Squarespace.com, is where you can go sign up. Uh, discount code is seat time six if you want to save up. Obviously, uh, we're, we're in July now, so it might actually be seat time seven. But I'm going to let you figure it out. Seat time six, seat time seven. You just go with it. Get crazy. Just pick your own number. But what that's going to do is it's going to save you 10% off of your monthly fees if you choose to sign up. You get two, two weeks free if you just go to squarespace.com, sign up for a free site, no credit cards, no nothing like that. You can transfer all of your content over from any other site that you've got out there. You can obviously have your own uh, URL, your own domain. It is a fantastic way to have the best customer service out there because you know why? It is 24-7. When all of the hurricanes hit New York City, there were actually Squarespace employees in the building bringing diesel fuel to the generators that were on top of the building to make sure that their servers stayed running so that all of their customers' websites stayed running. So the best customer service, and that's why I think a lot of people don't realize that, oh, I have to pay for a website. You don't have to pay for a website. You have to pay for the right people to run your website, and they do all the awesome stuff for you, and they're fantastic templates, great way to make fantastic websites, and uh, get your name out there. I think it's good for athletes. You know, They're trying to like, oh, what do I do with the website? You're like, oh, well, you go to Squarespace, sign up, put your name on it, put some fun pictures, some little videos, erase results, bam, you look like a professional. They probably even like check the... Typing, make sure kids spell their yeah, you should probably things do that. right. I mean, but yeah, that's up to you. Yeah. You know, it's called a WYSIWYG editor. It's going to have a spell check in it because <laughs> they're awesome and they build that into the site. But it's up to you to hit the spell check button. Grammar? Yeah. We're just, you have to call Dale Spangler on that one because yeah. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, check yeah. them out, please. Squarespace.com. Discount code C times six. Save yourself 10% off of either a month, a year, or a bi yearly. Thank you, Squarespace, for your support. So, Eric, you going to go sign up? Maybe. I saw you go right to the website. You went right to the website. You're like, no, I did. I was, I got a, I got an update on Facebook because this guy's my friend now. Posting stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to the Squarespace site at all. I'm just going to well, go look at Jared I mean, Bolton's pictures. Yeah. I have three websites on Joomla, and one of them is up, and the other two aren't yet. And I don't know. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, yeah, Squarespace. eventually, yeah. I will save myself ten percent by being awesome and not trying to do yeah. jubilee. Oh no, I support Squarespace because I support Seat Time. So. See, look at that man. So not That's only is he sexy, but he's fantastic. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, I mean, I, I just, I just like to say, Jordan. Yes, sir. Thanks for driving to thirty to forty-five minutes in oh, traffic man. while people looked at fruit to come hang out. <laughs> it was rough. Yeah. But you're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for cool. having me. Yeah. yeah. It's been fun. And this is, uh, the good thing is, is you have the opportunity to come be famous every Tuesday night. I like this idea. I'm just saying. I mean, could, I don't You can have... do push-ups. We could get you buff. I like this idea. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, all right, go. Go live. She's doing push-ups. I'm That's just saying. awesome. Get some crutches in there. Do some pull-ups. We put a pull-up bar up there. Yeah. Yeah, we have to get all kinds of live GoPros footage for this. Yeah. Stuff, but hey, we GoPro. can figure it out. We need sure. a sponsorship. That's what we need. Somebody talk to somebody. Make it happen. Eric, of course, we always appreciate you being on the show. And uh, Bolt On, you're just cute. The fact that you <laughs> were at a Starbucks <laughs> and totally got kicked out. And then just Wait. sat in your car and stole their internet. Yeah, and in West Virginia, of all places. Too. Yeah, you're like, suck it, bitches. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, the lady like leaned over the counter and was like, hey, it's 10 o'clock, we're closing. And I was like, oh, sorry. You're like, I'm on seat time, bitch. <laughs> this is more important than you going home. Do you have any idea how much I'm getting paid for this? I, I don't care if I'm inconveniencing you. This is awesome. Yeah, you're like, take your good time and shove it. Well, cool. Remember, guys, Seat Time, uh, we have the website where we archive all the shows at seattime.co. If you want to go ahead and uh, check out any of the old shows, you can find us on Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube. All you have to do is go to one of those uh, respective sites and search for Seat Time. And bam, you're like, oh my gosh, it's so magical. 
Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash seat time. And of course, we're on Twitter. If you would love to tweet us real hard, we like good times. And we'd like it when you tweet us all your good times. Twitter.com slash seat time underscore CO. Because if we stayed consistent, it would just feel consistent. We do not like consistency. That's right. Bolt on is just back there jamming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have any music going, but I'm jamming out here. Well, cool. We really appreciate the. Oh! I have a black water. Oh my gosh! Fred Andrews, 1993! Yeah, that's right. I like like how Jin tried to talk to him and he's like, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta pit my guy. (laughs) Fred's not even on this shirt. Well, his name's on the back. His name is on the back as the last bike winner. But, uh, no, it's some guy on like a 1990 KTM getting pulled up the Route 93 River Crossing. That's pretty sick. Nice. It's just like you drug a girl out of the woods. Yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> drugged her uh, in the out of the woods, not in the woods. In the woods, drugged, drugged her, her in the drugged woods. Drugged her in the woods. This story is changing <laughs> quickly. <laughs> you know, he did say at first he didn't want to talk about snowshoe. I understand why. Yeah, that's, that's why I continually <laughs> ask because the more you ask, the more you get. <laughs> We get so much more. Well, remember, guys, seat time is all about a pint full of awesome. And a pint full of awesome does not mean that you have to consume alcohol to have a good time. We do not condone that. If you're over 21, please make sure you do whatever you want to do. Uh, just remember the laws out there. And they're going to make sure that uh, you're doing what they want you to do. Um, keep keep watching seat time. Keep having fun. We really appreciate it. We want to know about all your off-road news, all your off-road awesome. So hit us up on any of those social little uh, areas. You know, Check out my pugs. Check out Bolt-On. Check out Jordan's guns. Stuff. It's all there. Yeah. It's on the internet for a reason because it's public. So, remember. <laughs> <laughs> now remember that Eric's a pirate. And he's going to come hook you. Arr! Oh, I turned it off and it won't go away. <laughs> oh, there's no reason to. So, remember, guys. Always enjoy a pint full of awesome. We're back next Tuesday. I'm going to be at the beach and it's going to be me and my dad. Probably a bottle of Tito's, and we're going to talk about some off-road racing and all the crap that he's done his his entire life and what's made me the man that I am today. So we appreciate it. We're going to see you next Tuesday. Thanks, guys.